Sandy Moss here again from my closet. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this closet. Uh, and what I want to talk about right now are a couple of things from ancient Eskimo world. This is uh, in the northern Bering Sea, close to the Bering Straits, where in the 19th century and much earlier, uh, the Western Arctic natives had quite a culture and they did lots of things with with uh, carving various instruments and various tools out of mainly walrus ivory. And I have two I items here which are, are both related. This is uh, a heavy piece of walrus ivory which has been carved and when you look at it closely you'll see it has, has quite a lot of engraving on it. It has a kind of a, an interesting shape. It's got a more or less straight sides and it's got a notch right here that my finger is in and a hole behind that notch. And what this is is a drum handle. Uh, this uh, was meant to hold an Eskimo drum, which isn't the kind of drum that we think of about uh, when you think of a snare drum or a bass drum or something like this. This is simply a hoop of wood, a circle, circular piece of wood, thin driftwood, which circles around and it, it may be anywhere from that size on up to this size or larger. Uh, and it's sort of like a tambourine. It has a membrane stretched over the top of it, but it doesn't have any metal jingles on the, the walls. It's simply a piece of wood that circles around and it's held in this, in this notch here. And it's tied into this notch with thongs of hide which come around the drum, the drum itself and back in. And now this is covered over with a piece of, of skin or bladder from uh, usually a walrus or something like that. And it's used by taking a, a stick, you know, a long stick, and tapping or beating against the side of the, the drum. So it makes a sound and it sort of resonates with the skin, but they don't pound right down on the skin, but rather on the side, just like you'd, you'd hit a tambourine with your, with your hand. Uh, and uh, in the dances that these people did in their ceremonies, they might have several people, you know, beating with some kind of rhythm on this drum and then vocalizing, singing along with it. I don't think they had any other instruments, just the drum and their voice. But they would have these, uh, these sort of ceremonies and parties and have a pretty good time at it in their winter quarters, which were pretty small and pretty stuffy, but they'd crowd a lot of people in and they would, they would beat these drums with this kind of thing. This, this probably dates, I'd say, from the engraving, three or four hundred years old. It's, it's been in permafrost for a while, that's why it has this, this uh, rich sort of brownish color to it. Uh, originally this would have been almost pure white. Now it's been stained by being in permafrost, being buried and having the organic materials in the peat and the permafrost kind of penetrate this. The second one that I have here is the same thing, the same idea. It's a, it's a drum handle. You can see again the notch right here. The top extends well above that notch so you can imagine the circular drum frame going like this uh, and it differs a little bit in that instead of having a hole for the rawhide thongs to hold the, the frame of the drum around this one has a slot you can hardly see that there's a slot here which is cut through and so it would be a, a flatter uh, piece of uh, rawhide that would, that would go around loop around and, and secure the uh, the drum frame to the handle. And this also, if you look very closely at it, you would see it's been, it's been nicely chamfered. It's, it's got bevels cut on the edges here. And at the other end, it's got sort of a swivel. It's been carved out with a hole here to make like a chain link. And this chain link hooked onto something else. I'm not sure what that would have been, but it might have been to hold it up to, to hang it when it wasn't being used or something like that. Uh, and this one has a much darker, richer brown color to it. It's for a smaller drum frame, 
but it has a much richer color. And this one has been in the permafrost even longer. This is, this is quite an old object. It's got a sort of an interesting groove that's been carved around it here. Uh, and it, but it doesn't have any lines in it. But the slots and whatnot uh, and the color of it make me think that this thing is probably oh, closer to a thousand years old than uh, two or three hundred years old for this one. <clears throat> so this is, is getting into the ancient Eskimo uh, time frame in the Bering Straits where these things came from. And they're kind of unusual. They're in this, in this size and condition, they're kind of rare. Uh, so I was happy to, to share them with you today.